Hey hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating this circular progress indicator in Flutter without using custom paint. Although custom paint is really powerful but I don't prefer adding the complexity of custom paint for creating such simple progress indicators unless I have to do something really exclusive. So let's take a look at how we can create this progress indicators with much less complexity. Okay, so right now I'm in a fresh Flutter project in which I just have this my homepage. And in this my homepage, the build function returns a scaffold, which is wrapped by a safe area. And this scaffold is having an app bar. In the body of scaffold, I just have a simple container. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll replace this container with a center widget so that we can center the progress indicator on the screen. And for the child of center, I'll create a simple container. For the size of this container, I'll come up in the build function and here I'll create a new file variable called size and put it equal to 200. I'll give the size to the container for width and height. And just for demonstration, I'll add a color to this container and make this color start blue. If I save the app, you can see that in the center of the screen, we have a container that is 200 by 200 in size. Now for the child of this container, I'll add a stack. In this stack, I'll add the children property. And the first child of the stack is going to be a shader mask. Now, this is the widget where all the magic happens. Well, Shader Mask is a really useful widget offered by Flutter. It has basically two properties. One is the shader callback, and the second one is the child. So the way the Shader Mask works is that it creates a mask using the shader callback, and it applies that to the child. So the visibility of the child is controlled by the Shader Mask callback. So what is a mask? Let's take a look. So right now I'm in Photoshop and here I have a simple text of Flutter. And above this text, I have this new layer in which the blue color is painted all over Flutter. And what I want to do is I want to limit the visibility of this blue color to the text Flutter. For this, you can see that I have a simple mask right here and it's currently disabled. If I click on it, it becomes visible and you can see that the blue color is now limited to the text Flutter. If I take a look at the mask, you can see that in the mask, the flutter text is in the white color and the rest of the area is black. This is because this is a simple alpha mat. In this, the white color represents visible and the black color represents invisible, that is transparent. So we're gonna apply the same logic in flutter using shader mask. Back to the project. The first thing that we need to do is we need to give a shader callback to this shader mask. And this function takes an argument of a rect which represents a rectangular area. And this shader callback has to return a shader. And for creating a shader, we have to use a gradient. And the gradient can be any one of the three, that is the sweep gradient, linear gradient, or radial gradient. In this particular case, we're gonna use the sweep gradient. And in the sweep gradient, we have to pass in the start angle, that is going to be 0.0. .0. And likewise, we have to give the value to end angle and the value should be in radians. So we're going to give it a value of 3.14 into 2, that is 2 pi. So just for your reference, what I'll do is I'll take the value from here and I'll create a simple constant above and I'll name this 2 pi and give this the value of 3.14 into 2. And I'll use this 2 pi in the sweep gradient and give it as an end angle. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set the center of the sweep gradient. And for this, I'm going to pass the value of alignment.center. And along with this, I'll also give this a property of colors. And this will take in a list of colors like any gradient. So I'll give this the color of colors.blue. And the second color is going to be colors.transparent. Now we can use the create shader function of sweep gradient. And you can see that this takes in a rect, which is given to us by the shader callback. Now that the shader is created, we can simply return this from the shader callback function. The next thing I'll do is I'll add a container to the child property. And for the size of the container, I'll pass in the width and height and give it the value of size. In this container, I'll also give it a decoration property and give this a box decoration. And the reason I'm adding this decoration is to change the shape of this container. In the box decoration, I have the shape property. And for this, I'll pass in a value of box shape dot circle. And along with this, I'll pass in a color of colors.blue. And I'll also remove the color from the main container because that was just for demonstration. At this point, if I save the app, you can see that the mask is being created by the sweep gradient and is being applied to this container that is circular in shape. One thing that I've made a mistake is that I've given the color of blue to the box decoration. Instead, I need to pass in colors.white. 
So what is happening here is that the sweep gradient is only being applied to the area of the child, which is colored white. So once this is done, I'll leave the shader mask as it is for now, and I'll add the second child to the stack, and this will be a simple container. And for this container, the width is going to be size minus 40. And for the height also, the value is going to be same. Next thing that I'll do is I'll also give it a decoration and give it a box decoration. And in this box decoration, I'll give it a color of colors.white and a shape of box shape.circle. Now you can see that the container is visible, but the position of container is not correct. For this, what I can simply do is I can wrap the container in a center widget and I save the app and you can see that the container is now in the center of the stack. And this is already giving us the look of a progress indicator. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to make this gradient a bit more precise. And for this, what we can do is we can come up to the sweep gradient and give it a property of stops. And this stops property takes in a list of double. And with the help of stops, we can limit the range of colors being applied to the sweep gradient. What I mean by this is if I give stops the value of 0.5 comma 0.5, you can see that the color blue is being filled from zero to pi and color transparent is being filled from pi to two pi. What this means is internally stops looks something like this. So basically 0.0, .0 represents the start of the angle. 0 0.5 represents half the circle. That means pi. So what it means is that the blue color is ranging from 0.0, .0 to 0 0.5. And the range of transparent is from 0 0.5 to 1.0. And this value of 0.0, .0 and 1.0 is being applied internally. We only have to apply the in-between points. And one thing you should also keep in mind is that the length of stops should be equal to the length of colors. So at this point, you should have already guessed that how the progress indicator will work. So basically, we'll be changing the value of these stops and accordingly, the progress indicator will indicate the progress. If I give the stops a value of 0.1 and 0.1 and save the app, you can see that only 10% of space is being filled. One thing that I can do right now is I can make the second color a bit more visible. So I'll change this to gray dot with alpha of 55. And at this point, you can see that this looks like a progress indicator and the blue color represents the progress completion. To automate this for this example, what we can do is we can take the container and wrap this inside of a tween animation builder. So in the tween animation builder, I have to give the builder property. And this gives us the context, the value of the tween and the child. And in this, I have to return the container. Now for the value of tween, I'll pass in a new tween object. And here I'll pass in the beginning point to 0, 0.0 and end to 1.0. And these values will map to the value of stops in sweep gradient. Along with the tween, I also give the value of duration. And the duration of this animation will be in seconds. And I'll give this a value of 4. Now, if I take this value of tween and pass it to the stops, you can see that the progress starts from 0, 0.0 and goes to the end at 1.0. Although in real life projects, you won't use tween animation builder here. You'll use an animation controller and create a more controlled animation, but this is good enough for demonstration purposes. Now what I can also do is I can come to the second child of the stack and after the box decoration, I'll pass in a child property and give it a simple text. And in this text, I'll just write RPS and I'll give it a text style and a size of 40. And now you can see that how easy it is to add some text to this progress indicator. To make it even more interesting, what I can do is I can come up in the builder and here I'll create a new int called percentage and this will be equal to value multiplied by 100 and I'll convert it to an int using the seal function. Now what I can do is I can use this percentage and display it in the text right here. At this point, if I save the app and run the app once again, you can see that the progress percentage is also shown in the center of the container. Now, to take this to the next level and create a progress indicator that I showed you in the demo, we have to make a simple change. What I need to do is I need to come to the child of the shader mask that is this container. And instead of the color, I have to give it an image. And this image is going to be of type decoration image. And for just a moment, I'll minimize the emulator. And here in the project, I have this assets directory. And in this, I have images. And here you can see that I have a radial scale. If I open this image, you can see that this is a radial scale that is completely white in color and the background is transparent. 
You have to keep in mind that the image should be transparent and all the visible areas should be white in color. So what I'll do is I'll use this image in the decoration image and for the image property, I'll pass in an image asset. And you can see that this is showing me an error here. The argument type image can't be assigned to the parameter type image provider. And this is because the decoration image takes in an image provider and we can simply get the image provider from this image by taking its image property. I'll bring the emulator back and at this point if I run the app, you can see that we have created a circular progress that looks like a radial scale. Along with these two properties, Shader Mask also gives us with a blend mode and you can use these blend modes to change the look and feel of progress indicator. You can find the code for this example in the description below and I also insist you to take a look at the Medium article that is in the description below for more examples of these kinds of progress indicators. I hope you find this video useful and if you do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and I thank you all for your amazing support. We are now a family of 20,000 and I'm really grateful for your patience for the last two months when I wasn't able to create any videos. I hope you find this video useful and I'll be back soon with a new video. See you next time. Peace.